So this next series of videos is going to be a two-part series where I show you how to build what I'm calling an art desk. So it will have these three storage-like cabinets on the bottom, these two smaller ones on either edge, and this one in the middle, which are going to fit modular cubbies the customer already has. So you'll be able to just pull your stuff in and out. They won't have drawers or um, cabinet fronts on these at all. So the basic construction of these is made out of three quarter inch plywood that's been rabbited in the corners and then the shelves are dadoed in place with a very thin face frame on it since you don't need a thick face face frame on construction like this as well as how to hide some of your screw holes on the side using decorative elements now the state these are in now they've just been primed these are going to be final painted white but that video will show you up until this point. And then the second video will be making the tabletop, which will span the top of these shelves, as well as I believe there's going to be some elements added onto the tabletop for storage as well. So I have my stack of six pieces of ply. They're all exactly the same size. I actually cut seven of these, but one of them is going to be the middle of that cabinet, so it's not going to be as tall as the others, but I still cut seven of them, and I'll just trim that one. So now I'm going to go through, and each one of these is going to have a rabbit on the top, a rabbit on the bottom, and then a dado right in the middle for that middle shelf. So I'm just going to switch out my cross-cutting blade with my dado blade and set it up to cut all those rabbits and then set it up to cut an identical dado in the middle of all of these and then my sides will be done and I could start cutting the pieces for the bottoms, the tops, and the centers. So I put a sacrificial fence on my table saw fence and then I put my dado sack in there and set it up to cut um, 23 30 seconds plywood which is what this is. I raised it to cut about halfway through that plywood. So now that I have those rabbits cut on both sides of all of my pieces, I'm going to be cutting another rabbit on the back side of all of my pieces, and that is what is going to hold the backer in place on all of these shelves. So I took a couple pieces out of my dado stack and I slid it over because the backer is going to be about a quarter of an inch. You don't need a huge backer because these are not gigantic pieces of furniture and they're not going to be holding a ton of weight and then I'm just going to slide them through and since so far these pieces are identical it doesn't matter which side becomes the back and which side becomes the front so I'm just going to slide one side of each piece through and cut that rabbit. With my three rabbits cut I'm now going to cut my center dado on all of my pieces. And this is going to be the last cut before I could start cutting the shells and the tops and the bottoms and putting this together. So what I did was I measured the inner piece of plywood that was left and it's 26 and a half. So I found my middle point of that which is 12 and a quarter and then measured out from each side the thickness of my plywood and made a mark. Then I set my fence so that it will cut this dado perfectly down in between the two lines. So now I could take all of my pieces, obviously with the cut side down, and run this through my table saw, and all of these dados will be perfectly spaced on each piece. So with that set up, I can now measure the 
inside dimension of where I cut my rabbits, and that's 12 and 7 eighths. And I'm probably going to round that up to 13, 13 inches just so that you have some space to put your fingers on either side of these cubbies. So that means that I can now know that the, all of these have to be cut 13 inches wide. I can also go through and measure the height now and it's at 15 and 3 quarters. So you want that shelf to not come past, to make life easier, you want that shelf to not come past where you cut that rabbit so you don't have, so you don't have to cut rabbits into all of your shelves. Uh, so you don't have to cut rabbits into the top and the bottom. You just make them short of the back. So I'm gonna, since the, the two sides are different dimensions than the inner ones now, I'm going to be cutting six pieces at 13 inches by 15 and 3 quarters. I use the same method on the double wide cabinet to measure for the top and bottom as I did for the smaller ones. So I got to where I wanted it where with the center there will be 12 inches for the cubbies and I'm going to measure the inside and that's going to be about 25 and 3 quarters and I'm probably going to round that up to 26 just to give some leeway as like I did for the sides. So I'm going to cut two pieces at 26 by 15 and 3 quarters because the depths are all the same. And then the top and the bottom are going to have to have a dado cut into them to accept the middle piece. As well as then the middle piece is going to have to have two dados cut into the sides for these two middle shelves. So I'm going to cut the top and bottom and then um, make those four dados and then I'll be able to cut the shelves for this one and then the carcasses will be done. With my top and bottom cut to size, I found the center of each and made a line. Then I marked where my um, data would go and lined it up with the stack I put in my blade and my saw and then I'm going to send both of these through and put that middle data in there for the So I dry fit that middle cabinet together and then I measured the distance between my two dado grooves and it's 27 and a quarter. So I'm going to take that middle piece I have over to my radial arm saw and I'm going to rip it, uh, cross cut it down to 27 and a quarter and then I could put the two dado grooves on either side and then this carcass will be done. Once I trimmed my middle to length, I marked center and marked where my dado was. Now this one's going to be cut on both sides, so before I run it through, I lowered my blade probably about a quarter inch so that you don't go through when you go through both sides. With those dados cut on either side of those, that center panel, I re-put all this back together, dry fitted it, it's held in uh, place by one clamp, and then I could go and measure the distance I need to cut for that middle shelf, which is going to be 12 and 3 quarters, and then that will also be by 15 and 3 quarters, which will be what the inside height is for all of these, so I could go cut those two panels. Also, um, I never trimmed this middle piece to 15 and 3 quarters, so I'll trim that as well. Now, while this is together, I'm also going to measure my opening for the back and cut my back panel so I don't have to re-put this back together. 
So the width is going to be 26 inches. And that 26 matches on the top. And then it should be 28 high, which is what the sides are. And it is, it's exactly 28. So I could cut that back panel at 26 by 28. And the nice thing about these smaller cabinets, sometimes on bigger ones, I'll cut a rabbit in um, the top as well so the panel fits in. But on this cabinet, I decided just to make all of these shorter so that one panel will fit in between these two rabbits and then go from the floor to the top of the cabinet. It just makes life a little bit easier on these smaller pieces. So I have all my pieces. I moved them into the basement because it's like it's officially too cold outside for glue to dry out there and it will probably be like that for the next couple months. So I, I moved these inside and let them sit overnight so the glue and the wood is going to be at the same temperature. And now I'm going to start putting them together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a countersinking bit to countersink probably four holes in each of my dados and my rabbits so that on the other side I could countersink as well and put these together using screws, which means I won't have to use clamps. And this isn't ideal because then on the, the side of your um, cabinet or your shelf that shows, you'll have some countersinked holes that will have to be filled. But I don't have a ton of clamps. I probably don't even have enough to put all three of these together at once. And it's um, the tail end of the Christmas season, so we're trying to get a bunch of stuff done at once. And I can't really tie up all my clamps with letting these dry because even though it's warmer down here, it's still cold enough that it will take longer for the glue to set up. So I'm going to end up using these screws and then I won't have to use clamps at all. So now before this cabinet sets up, I'm going to measure my diagonals to make sure that it's square, and they are, but then you could also take a square and put it in all your corners to make sure that it's square. And the last way to decide that is to take your backer and put it in place. And that fits perfectly, so I'm going to attach that and then let this dry. So between the time to allow these to dry and now that I'm, I'm getting back into working on them, I've kind of changed my plan for how to finish up these cabinets. Now, the back, um, you will have the plywood seam um, from the back where you put that rabbit, but that won't matter because you'll never see it. And there will also be those on the top and the bottom, but you'll have the same, um, the same convenience of that. You will never see the top and the bottom. Now, the front's going to get a face frame, but I'm not going to do that until after I deal with the sides. So originally, like I said, I was just going to patch all these holes, but... I hate sanding, and even if you're really good at patching, you can usually still see where those are. So I have a bunch of poplar scrap because I use poplar a lot in other jobs, and I just ripped these down to 3 16 of an inch thick pieces. I made a whole stack of them all the same thickness, and I'm just going to trim out the sides of all of these cabinets. So I'm going to put a piece on either side and then one across the top, the middle, and the bottom. 
it'll make it look like it is an artistic decision, but it's going to take care of covering all of these holes so I won't have to worry about patching them. And it will also make the cabinet look a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to go and put glue on the back of all of these and start attaching them with brads. And as I get to the end, I'll just trim off the excess and just keep moving. So to make the face frames for this piece, I took this poplar, I, uh, scrap poplar I had, and I ripped it down to one inch. It's about actually one and an eighth in sections because it's better to have it go over a little bit and plane it down than to not be wide enough. Now I'm going to turn it on edge and rip it down to about probably three sixteenths what the side trim is and get those pieces and then I could start attaching them to my face frame. Now the middle sections where the shells are, those are still three quarters of an inch because you don't have the thickness of the side trim. So I'm just going to take these couple straps and rip those down into three quarter inch, three sixteenths pieces. So I just cut these strips for my face frame. So I have these oversized one inch strips for the edges since with this added trim this is about an inch and I just like to have a little extra just in case something in the plywood's not square and it's so easy to go back afterwards and plane the edge if it's too wide. And then I have these three quarter inch strips for my middles. Earlier this morning, I patched all of my brad nail holes with, um, I use this stuff, Ready Patch. It's cheap, it dries pretty quick, even though I didn't need to dry quickly today, and it's very easy to sand. So now that it's dry, I could go through and sand all my face frames, and then these are ready for primer.